This is our third session on Ephesians 6, 14 to 17. I'm going to read it through again. And as we go, I'm going to underline the immaterial uh, articles of clothing or weaponry, just to point out that we're dealing not only with material images or symbols like breastplate, that would be material. You can hold that in your hand. And then here's the immaterial thing that it represents, righteousness. You can't hold righteousness in your hand. So that's what I'm going to do first, and then I'll make some observations about that. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth. That's the immaterial part, and the belt or the girding is the material part. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the readiness of the gospel of peace, immaterial whether you focus on readiness or gospel news. In all circumstances, taking up the shield, material, of faith, immaterial, with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet, material, of salvation, immaterial, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Of course, you could conceive of Word of God as material by saying it's your Bible, but here's this Word of God as something announced for you to hear and understand. And so there they are, truth, righteousness, readiness, faith, salvation, Word of God. Father, as we ponder some implications of this now and the actions that we are to uh, implement in order to embrace these Guide us, Lord, so that these six realities become part of us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So the point of drawing your attention to the fact that these six things are immaterial is so that we have it clear in our minds that when the verbs are cited, we realize it's not something we do with our hands, even though that's the imagery being used, right? Therefore, gird, having put on, having shod, in all circumstances, take up, take, take. So if this is real clothing and real imagery, then that's something you do with your hands or your feet or somebody helping you do it with their hands. But in fact, Paul is talking about these realities over here that you can't touch with your hands. They are spiritual realities or immaterial realities. And we are somehow supposed to do something with these, but not with our hands. So the imagery has to be thought through. And what do we do with truth? This is not something you do with hands, right? It's something you do with your, your mind or your, your heart, or you could say your reason, reason, or your will. So when he's addressing us with these images or symbols, gird, put on, shoe up, take up, take, take, he's talking, do it with your mind, do it with your heart, your reason your will, and we need to ask, okay, what is that? How do you do that? And here's something I saw between the last episode and this episode that I had never seen before. So this is fresh, and you need to test it to see whether this carries any weight with you. But I am finding it illuminating, because I'm constantly trying to figure out uh, the order here and how this all fits together and what we really do morning, noon, and night in order to obey these six commands. And here's what I saw. In trying to understand what I do with my mind, what I do with my heart, my reason, my will, in order to gird with truth or put on righteousness, I noticed, and this is why I put the Greek in here, 
You don't need to know Greek in order to see what I'm seeing. I noticed that the put on here, that word for put on the breastplate of righteousness is used in verse 11. Here it is for the whole armor. Okay. So and now this word here is the same word as put on clothing. We're going to go back in just a minute and see it in chapter 4, verse 22 to 24. Put on, same verb, the new self. And we made a big argument that this is like, okay, the new self is like a a uniform that you wear. So here's here's the point. Since um, put on is used here for the whole armor of God, meaning all six of these should be put on, you can't say then that only the breastplate is to be put on, even though that's the only place in the six where that verb is used, because 611 says, no, that verb applies to every one of these, even though different verbs are used here. And what would that what would that signify? And it caused me to say, huh, this is a verb for what you do with clothing, not what you do with a shield. So then I stepped back and said, okay, hmm. Are, are some of these clothing and some of these more weapon-like? And I said, yeah, the first three are, um, are like clothing. Like a belt is like clothing, and so you put it on. And um, a breastplate, even though it's armor, is something you wear. You strap it on like a shirt. It's not like a shield that you hold in your hand. It's like it's strapped onto you. It's like clothing that you put on. And shoes, you put those on as well. So the first three are are like uh, clothing articles that I had not noticed before. And the next three are more like things you, you are more extraneous to you. You take up a shield and you take up a sword. Now, helmet doesn't, qu- doesn't quite fit the same, but in a sense, helmet is not like an ordinary article of clothing. I'm not aware that anybody um, wore helmets ordinarily. So that doesn't necessarily fit. This word, this word take is not exactly the same as take up. It's more like receive all the other places in Paul where this word take is used. It means take from somebody else to yourself, welcome somebody. It's like somebody handed you your helmet and you received it and they handed you your sword and you took it. So it sounds like these three are more like things you can hold in your hand, weapons like, and uh, the, this one, it, these three are more like pieces of clothing. And yet, back in chapter uh, 6, verse 11, the put on like clothing is for all of them. And notice, the take up, which refers here to what you do with a shield, it too is what you do with the whole armor of God. And that made me say, hmm, huh. So the, the verb used for weapons, like a shield, taking it in your hand, is used for the whole armor. And the verb used for pieces of clothing is used for the whole armor, which means it looks like Paul wants us to think of all the six articles as both clothing, from one standpoint, and weapons from another standpoint. Let's try that. Let's walk through and see what the mind might do if it thought of them all as clothing, and what the mind might do if they're all pieces of armor. So the mind says, I'm going to put on truth. And put on, remember, back in chapter 4, put on the new self. And you can't help but think that since this verb is only here used outside of chapter 6 and is referred to the new self as the way we are protected from deceitful desires like these 
demons who are opposing us in chapter 6, that Paul really does mean something, the same thing with the armor as he does with put on the new self. So I'm going to walk through and think of these as my new uniform, my new self, my new identity. So take your mind and embrace truth as your new identity. I am a person of truth, God's truth, and I speak the truth. I am a person of righteousness. I embrace God's righteousness. I act my righteousness. I am a person of love of the gospel of peace and always ready to speak it. I am a person of faith. That's who I am. My new nature is to be believing in the promises of God. I am a person who is saved, and I embrace my salvation as my new identity. I'm a person of the word of God. That's my new identity. That's what I think is implied in put on, understood as clothing. Now, what about take up, which also applies to the whole armor back here. Let's walk through that way. I now take up truth as a weapon, and I will use truth to defeat error everywhere I can find it and thus frustrate the devil who's a liar. I will take up righteousness and make my members, like Paul says in Romans 6.13, instruments or, or um, tools of righteousness so that I defeat in my own heart unrighteousness and bring it about everywhere I can. I take up readiness for the gospel and I make it a weapon to bring about peace everywhere I can. I take up faith as a weapon to quench all these flaming, flaming darts. I take up my salvation and throw it in the face of the devil and say, you cannot have me. I am saved by grace through faith. And I take up the word of God and I use it, wield it like a sword in order to bring down every exalted thing lifted up against the knowledge of God. So there's my newer insight that this word take up applies here to faith, but applies to all six back in chapter, previous paragraph, and this applies to all six, one of them from the vantage point of clothing, one from the vantage point of how you take up an article that's a, a weapon, and that's what we do with our mind and our heart as we walk through each time doing what I think we were told to do here and here. Take, put on the whole armor, take up the whole armor. Now, next time, we're going to go step by step and try to be more specific about how we do that.